All right, so today we're going to analyze how energy is um, transformed as it goes through an asymmetric system. So we're going to test the different parts of our circuit here. Um, <clears throat> we have a voltage supply, uh, power supply, 13.8 volts. We have an amp meter, and that powers a power wave modulator. And the power wave modulator then powers our asymmetrical motor slash generator. <laughs> Then we have an amperage reading coming out of the generator, which goes into a microwave capacitor in series with the rodent coil. And that's what I was showing in the last video of uh, how energy can be basically pulled out of the earth. So <clears throat> our first test point is going to be our voltage supply. We're going to test if uh, we're going to test a five watt light bulb in uh, just across the load and then a 5 watt light bulb in series with the capacitor across the load and we'll see if it lights for all these different test points and we'll see if there's any differences all right so here's our power supply it says right there 13.8 volts DC and here's a power wave modulator so we'll just hook this up to light bulb that I have hanging here since it's Kind of hard to do stuff with one arm. All right, and we turn our supply on here, right? On, and we have light. Cool. Now we'll put it through this microwave capacitor, and we'll see if it lights. And we turn it on and look at that, there's no light. It's because there's a capacitor there. Capacitor will block DC voltage and amperage. All right, so we'll take this and we'll power our power wave modulator. And now we can analyze the output of our power wave modulator with the light. So, this is the output. We'll turn the power supply on, and voila, our power wave modulator does exactly what it's supposed to do, which is vary the amount of energy that goes into it by varying the pulse width. So, we just turn this knob and the light gets brighter and smaller, right? Cool. So now we'll put it through a capacitor again. And it doesn't light. All right, cool. So for test one here, we can say that with the voltage supply here, it was on in this case and off in this case. And test two with the power wave modulator, we can say light turned on in this case and it was off in this case. So now we'll hook up our motor and we'll test the output. So we'll unhook here. And all right, so now our Generator or motor generator is hooked up, and we have the output going through this amp meter. So we can analyze the AC amperage and DC amperage just for fun. So this motor should technically be putting out DC, uh, well, it does put out DC amperage, but there's also another component to it that's asymmetric. So we'll show there's another component by hooking it up to our light bulb. So we'll hook it up directly. All right. All right. And we'll notice that the light already comes on. The motor's not turning. We'll also turn this to DC amperage, and there's no DC amperage flowing yet. Now we gotta.
put enough energy into the motor to start turning it. So we'll turn the power wave modulator up. All right, now we have DC amperage and light. Now let's notice how uh, the speed of the motor varies with the amount of light that comes out of the load. So. So basically it looked like the light got brighter as the speed went up and it kind of kind of went a little bit dimmer at full speed. So so far the light is on here. So now we'll take our output and we'll put it through the capacitor again. see that the light lights all right through the capacitor so now we'll see how the load changes with the speed of the motor So the light actually went out at full speed. And we'll see uh, DC amperage. No DC amperage. And that is because there's a capacitor there. So there's no DC voltage flowing. If we switch this thing to AC, we get uh, all kinds of weird readings. So we have 0.2 amps or something blowing AC. Alright, and this meter is brand new. I blew up all my other ones. So, <clears throat> we have something coming out. And so now here we can say, oh, look, it's a metric system. We have a difference in how the energy is propagating. And uh, my claim is that the energy that comes through this capacitor, the energy that can travel through it, is what excites my rodent coil. All right, so we can uh, let's uh, let's look at the waveform of the output of the motor. It looks like this, right? That's the 13 kilohertz frequency as we vary the pulse width. Right, and what we want to pay attention to is uh, really how big this pulse width, pulse width is up here in comparison to the off time. All right, and um, so now we'll put our coil um, onto the generator. So we'll do that by put one here, and then we'll take our capacitor, put that in series with the motor, and we already have energy, right? So this is connected to earth ground and this is connected to earth ground. We can also take that, take them both off earth ground and we get energy just straight from the coil. Or we can have one end free and the earth ground. So. We can do a range of things. But what I wanted to show mostly is um, look at our waveform when we, so this is without the coil. Have this hooked up right. So this is, this is just the regular motor output without connection to the road coil. And then we'll connect the road and coil. So, you see that? Our voltage ground right here, right? and when we connect the road and coil, it dips under that. So, let's see if we can get a good shot. 
right? Now see, watch how there's one wave that's up in amplitude, and then as this pulse is gone here, we get a negative swing when the rodent coil is attached. Right? You see that? This little negative swing here, and then we get our next pulse. So the reason that this is possible is because it's asymmetric. This thing is asymmetric. So when energy is put into the coil, since this weird little vortex, uh, the magnetic field lines don't actually cancel each other out like in a symmetric system. So because uh, the magnetic field lines are like at a weird vortex angle to each other, it actually lets the energy uh, oscillate back and forth. And this is essentially from the environment. Those back EMF spikes that we always try and filter out in electronics are actually the environment trying to push back on the magnetic field that shouldn't naturally be there. So by letting it resonate with the environment instead of destroy itself into heat, we can resonate with the environment, hence resonating with the earth. So this negative swing basically creates an AC voltage swing between the type of electricity that's associated with the environment. So you can call me nuts, but uh, this thing is working. There's no magic. You can build this motor or this motor here off UFO politics. This is a Chinese MY1016 motor that uh, you need two of them to build one because you need you need to put in energy mostly in energy uh, motors you put in energy this way so every time the coil in here swings over it's now backwards to the energy you put into it which makes heat. So what we do now is we put in energy sideways like this so now every time the coil swings over, you put an energy the same direction and you get a swing with the environment. So that's what that is. The negative swing is the environment. And we can turn this thing up. And we get power, right? So, uh, yeah, and we, we also see that we get, uh, we get some big AC amperage when we connect the rodent coil as well, but um, it's also uh, associated with how close my hand gets to this. So uh, I would say that this reading is flawed. You can't say how much energy is coming out and going into the coil because it's through a capacitor and this thing can't measure whatever is coming out. So uh, the only thing you can measure is energy. And this is making energy. So you can say, well, we have one point, you know, whatever. Oh, my hand got closer. Now we have three. So it's, uh, you, you can't measure it. The way these things work don't work with the type of electricity that the environment is associated with. So I hope this clarifies a little bit more what exactly is going on. Thanks for watching.